Don't talk, just listen. From 1981 to 1982, three women would lose their lives to a psychotic killer on the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin. He used ice picks, screwdrivers, and even bathwater to murder his victims. After his capture, he would tell investigators that killing was, seemed to me, the thing you were supposed to do. That was part of life. Driving a car was part of life. Eating food was part of life. To me, it seemed like killing was a part of life until I did it. After attacking his victims, he would often call 911 to report them himself in a hysterical tone as if he was crying profusely. Paul Michael Stefani, the weepy voiced killer. Paul Michael Stefani was born in 1944 in Austin, Minnesota. He had nine siblings and his family was intensely religious, which may have led to a sense of remorse in later years after he committed murder, which partially explains the bizarre phone calls. In the 1960s, he moved to St. Paul, Minnesota. Stefani worked as a shipping clerk and as a janitor. Around this time, he also married a woman named Beverly Leiter and the two had a daughter. The marriage did not last and he was also convicted of an aggravated assault before the horrific events he would later become known for unfolded. In 1977, Stefani was fired from his job at Malberg Manufacturing. This company was also located where his first victim would be found three years later. Karen Potak was a 20-year-old university student who was out with her friends in St. Paul on New Year's Eve in 1980. She left the bar and her friends around midnight and was walking through the city. Three hours later, a phone call came into police. The high-pitched voice on the other end reported an attack and said to send help. Stefani had used a tire iron to beat the young woman and she had just barely survived the ordeal. She would eventually recover from the brain trauma and cracked skull. Yes, please, this is an emergency. Please send a squad to pissed on the road. Uh, Malmberg Manufacturing Company, Machine Shop. Please, there's an ambulance too. There's a girl hurt there. Can you tell me what happened to her? Just hurry, there's a, she's laying on the ground in the back by the by the railroad tracks by the edge here. Hurry. What, what's the address? I don't know. Who? The next victim would not be so fortunate. Kimberly Compton was an 18-year-old when she crossed paths with the monster on June 3, 1981. Police got a call from the killer to report the murder describing how he had used an ice pick to stab her. Police found Kimberly's body near a freeway construction site, and the search for the man who had reported the attack was on. He was already being referred to as the weepy-voiced killer due to the tone and manner in which the phone call was made. Oh, you f- You find me? I just stabbed somebody with an ice pick. I can't stop myself. I keep killing somebody with a- Don't talk. Just listen. I'm sorry what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I had to stab her. I am so upset about it. I keep getting drunk every day and I can't believe it. It's like a big dream. I can't think of being locked up. If I get locked up, I'll kill myself. I'd rather kill myself than get locked up. I'll try not to kill anybody else. On the 21st of July in 1981, the killer struck again more than a year after his first murder. Kathleen Greening was 33 years old when Stefani killed her. She was found drowned in her own bathtub at home. Because Stefani did not call to report this murder, it was not tied to the others until he confessed to the killing from prison. Shortly after the murder of Greening, the killer was on the prowl for another victim. He met Barbara Simons on August 6, 1982, in a bar called The Hexagon and struck up conversation by asking her for a cigarette. After the two spent the night talking, a waitress would later report that Simons had told her, He's cute. I hope he's nice since he's giving me a ride home. When Stefani called to report the crime, he said that he had stabbed her 40 times, but in reality, 
he had stabbed her more than a hundred times. In this phone call, he also referred back to the murder of Kimberly Compton. Player emergency. Please don't talk to him, please. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. I stabbed her 40 times. Kimberly Compton was the first one. Oh my God, I don't know what the matter is. I'm gonna kill myself, I think. Where are you? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna die for the whole kid on it's me. I killed all the Something had snapped in Stefani, and he was seeking another victim barely more than two weeks after the vicious murder of Barbara Simons. He picked up a 21-year-old prostitute named Denise Williams on the 21st of August, 1982, in Minneapolis. After the two concluded their business in Stefani's apartment, he offered Williams a ride back to the city. Instead, he drove to a secluded dead-end road and began stabbing at her with a screwdriver. Denise Williams had sensed something was wrong when he did not drive toward the city, so she responded by grabbing a glass bottle she had seen in the car and clubbed Stefani in the face with it. It shattered and left deep cuts that began to bleed profusely. Even through this, he continued to plunge the screwdriver into Williams until her screams woke a nearby resident. When Stefani saw the witness, he fled the scene. Williams survived the attack despite 15 puncture wounds she had suffered to her chest abdomen, and head. Once he was away from the crime scene, the killer tried to tend to his wounds. When he was unable to stop the bleeding, Stefani called 911, this time for himself. The operator recognized the voice and quickly connected the injuries to the attack on Denise Williams. The witness who had seen him stabbing Williams also confirmed that Stefani was the attacker, and he was arrested on suspicion of murder and attempted murder. The trial for Stefani began in 1982, almost immediately after his arrest. Various people came forward to say that they believed Stefani was the weepy-voiced killer that was known to have murdered at least two people at this point. Those who testified to this included his sister and ex-wife, but the circumstantial evidence linking him to the killings was not enough, and so he was convicted only of the attempted murder and assault on Denise Williams and sentenced to a total of 224 months in prison. While behind bars, Stefani was diagnosed with skin cancer in 1997. He had a year to live and wanted to clear his conscience. Stefani called the St. Paul Police Department and agreed to confess. He told them how he had beaten Karen Potak with a tire iron in 1980, stabbed Kimberly Compton in 1981, drowned Kathleen Greening on July 21, 1982, which had been previously unconnected to the other murders, the stabbing murder of Barbara Simons on the 6th of August in 1982, and the attack on Denise Williams. Paul Michael Stefani told the Star Tribune newspaper, Since I've been locked down the last 15 years, I've wondered how all this could happen. And all I can say is, I'm sick and I'm sorry, if sorry means anything after 15 years. A year later, Stefani died of cancer-related complications on June 12, 1998 the Oak Park Heights Prison.